Irish community in America sort of praying for peace and reconciliation back in Ireland. And he, and he has this image of uh, this St. Dominic's Cathedral. And then a few weeks later, he reads in a newspaper that there is indeed this vigil in St. Dominic's Cathedral in San Francisco uh, doing precisely that, praying for reconciliation in, in Northern Ireland. And he says he wasn't even aware that there was a St. Dominic's uh, Cathedral in San Francisco. I able to go to this place because he's proved his commercial work. He's ingratiated himself with the, the radio programmers and the record company are happy. So the big meditative uh, long form tracks which uh, didn't play too well in the marketplace on Astral Weeks now come back into uh, focus. I think there's a real seismic leap in the scale and the ambition of his songwriting around this time, you know, and he, he, you know, you can hear it on the kind of key songs on the record would be Listen to the Lion and almost Independence Day. As with Cypress Avenue and Madame George, just as people talk about those two songs, um, on this album, they'll focus on the Jackie Wilson said in the R&B songs, but when you come down to debating the album, they'll say, well, I guess the two issues of debate are going to come down to the two big narrative songs, and, and that's uh, one of them is almost Independence Day, and the others listen to the lion. And hear the people shouting out. Up and down the line. Up and down the line. And it's almost the end. Now, almost Independence Day is, is again, it's a, a serious departure for Morris, and it, it might be what one might almost call, you know, the birth of sort of new age music in his work, not least because it does incorporate a Moog synthesizer, um, which is unusual for Morrison. I mean, you don't, you don't associate Morrison with Moog synthesizers. But there he is, and he's using it um, as a backdrop um, to his own peculiar musings and, and using very odd, you know, vocal experiments as well in that song to create this lengthy mood piece. And it's an attempt to create a mood piece over a long piece of music. It's got a new age element to it. It's not to everybody's cup of tea. I've seen it criticised in print. Um, but I do think it was very ambitious and it was, it was great to see Morrison doing that and trying to, trying to stretch himself. He could easily have done, I think, uh, a whole series of songs like Jackie Wilson said and and, and followed up what he was doing on Moondance, and everybody would have loved it. But I think he, he wanted to try something more ambitious there, and, and he succeeded. I'll see the lights way out in the harbor. Of course, the song on the other side, Listen to the Lion, was even more ambitious than that. Not musically, because it was using um, synthesizers or anything like that. It was just, again, the ultimate distillation of, 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 of all Morrison's strengths as a vocalist, in which he stretches himself. There's a, there's a wonderful sense of abandonment in the best parts of, of, of Astral Weeks. And that abandonment in his vocal is very much there on Listen to the Lion. I mean, he stretches himself to the limit on that song. I mean, it's, it's, it's a quite stunning tour de force where, where he's, you feel that he's improvising, you feel that this has to be a one take, you know, it couldn't be rehearsed. I mean, he's using his voice as a vehicle for sound as well as a vehicle for, for words and, and meaning in, in a, a really quite epic and extraordinary way. Oh.
I think that's, that's really where Van's poetry comes out, really. It's, it's the way he sings stuff, not necessarily the lines. I mean, people probably find themselves hard-pushed to sort of quote a Van Morrison line in the way that you could quote a Bob Dylan line or sometimes even a Beatles line. But I, I think the poetry of Van is that he just knows how to infuse language with, with emotion, with you know, deep, powerful emotion. So you're not really thinking about um, you know, a big animal with a, with a golden mane. It's, it's got beyond that because he's, he's just sort of teasing everything he can out of the language. It's got the symbolic lion uh, as its centerpiece, and Morrison almost, you know, famously tries to become the lion. He's, he roars, he chants, he growls, he, 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 he uses every, every kind of vocal nuance that he can find to try and articulate what, something in his head, which he may not even know. And, um, and it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful, wonderful piece. We're from Denmark. Well, the child don't want you. Long for a brand new start. And it also has um, the metaphysical landscape as well, in the notion of this, this, this trip to Caledonia. The, the first example, I think, of what I would call, you know, the equivalent of quest literature in Morrison's work. Um, if, if Madame George or Cypress Avenue was an example of stream of consciousness work, then, then this is an example of, 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 of quest literature work. Um, Caledonia, it means, it obviously means ancient Scotland. But in Morrison's world, it's, 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 it's a fictional, lyrical landscape. It's a landscape of the mind as much as anything else. And when you, that's what he's searching for, and that's the whole concept of the symbolic line too. It's, it's, it's something outside of a naturalistic landscape. It's Morrison searching for something more. So just as in, in almost Independence Day, musically, he's, he's trying to find something different, something that will ultimately lead to the, to the kind of meditative music he did in the 80s, Listen to the lion is, is, is an attempt for him to discover that in, 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 a, in, a, in a song in which both the, the lyrics and the vocal execution are spiralling towards something that, that is ultimately indefinable. And it's that attempt to grasp the evanescent again. And that's the whole point of quest literature. It's the quest that matters, it's not the arrival. He can never find the lion ultimately, but it's the striving towards it which... which um, is the achievement, and that's, that's the great achievement of that record. Despite breaking the US top 20 with St. Dominic's preview, Morrison's fortunes were about to take a turn for the worse. His marriage to Janet Planet wound up in the divorce courts in early 1973, while a new studio album, Hard Knows the Highway, represented the nadir of his recording history and was shunned by critics and audiences alike. Hard Knows the Highway is a disappointing album in, in many ways. Um, I think it's the first album he produces himself. Uh, the songs aren't very strong. There are only eight songs on the album. Two of them are covers. Uh, he also starts bitching in some of the songs about his dislike of the music industry, which uh, is, is perfectly understandable, but is never very attractive to, to listen to. Um, the Great Deception is all about that. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's not his strongest bunch of songs. I think it's, it's, it's as simple as that. That's the main reason why it's uh, uh, not one of the great Van Morrison albums. Why would he record a song like, you know, the, the, the song about being green from The Muppet Show, the song that Kermit sang on The Muppets? It seemed like a really odd thing to throw into, throw into a record. It's a, it's, a, it's a muddy record, it's a, it's a, 